This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this um, video. A Jewish calendar. Today we are um, counting the 10th day of the month of Tevet. In this um, day, we remember some um, very painful times for our nation. And I would rather not to focus on that because pain and sorrow is something that we're familiar with, but I would want us to mention and remember that today is also the Yort site, the anniversary um, of Rabbi Natan of Breslev. Rabbi Natan of Breslev, we can ask ourselves why we will mention the day of his uh, memorial as an anniversary, as a joyful, happy hour, because that a person can never appreciate a great light until he feel and experience the loss of that light or a wise person can learn from the darkness that he experienced in the past to appreciate future illuminations that are coming ahead so the fact that he passed away is a great reminder for us of his holiness of his purity of his greatness, of the great benefits that we gain um, by him, by his merit and by his righteousness and by his holiness and by his dedication to the truth. So I brought this wonderful book that is called Yemem Moharanat, The Days of Rabbi Natan. And I will read few parts that are very precious and very important and I will translate of course it's written in uh, in Hebrew in the holy language Lashon Kodesh and um, I believe that you will have some understanding from those uh, amazing writings of Rabbi Natan on his greatness so in this amazing life story of Rabbi Natan, the main student of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, um, that was standing to his right in the ups and in the downs, in the difficult hours and in the most blessed and inspiring hours. In his book, he is describing in the first part of that book on the days of his life, he's describing a great um, attachment, a great connection to that source of inspiration, um, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev himself. And the family of Rabbi Natan was very far from joining the Hasidut, that way of serving Hashem based on the method of the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Israel, a Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Israel ben Sara, a Baal Shem Tov, that he was the main teacher who opened our eyes 200 and <clears throat> around 250 years ago to new ways and to ancient ways that been revealed to our eyes again in a new way in a great light so all those groups that followed the students of the Baal Shem Tov are being called Hasidim the followers of the Baal Shem Tov main general method of way of serving Hashem. So Breslev is one of the Hasiduyot. So Rabbi Natan wanted to join the Hasiduyot and to learn from the great chief rabbis, the Admorim of the Hasiduyot of that early generation. Only few years after the Baal Shem Tov passed away, but his family were very, very far from that mindset and they fought with him and argued with him and 
had such battles and for him it was such a challenge to push and to achieve the things that he realized that were the truth, the hardcore of truth, the real true way to connect yourself to Hashem, to become one with Hashem, to serve Hashem in that most beautiful way based on Chassidut. But his family were so against that and they were trying to do whatever they can to force him not and to walk in that path. But Rabbi Nathan was strong and very stubborn on his understanding of what the right thing to do is. And he did not move away for an inch, for a breath of a hair from his main rabbi, Rabbi Nachman of Westlev. So there is a great conversation that I wanted to read to you. And even though that it's coming in a period of time that was very painful for Rabbi Natan, because it is talking about the last hours before Rabbi Nachman of Breslev passed away. But Rabbi Natan was the only one that had the merit to stand in those hours and the last night for the life of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev by his side. And, um, and he's describing something very deep that I think that can be very useful for us to understand. So Rabbi Nathan is describing that time in that night. And I was standing on my own alone in front of him in that night. And he looked at me and he saw me with his great eyes and looked at me for a very long time. And every time he looked and stared at me, that he was looking at me, his eyesights were like true conversations, like real talking. And I can understand now more and more things now, means like one year, two years, 10 years after Rabbi Nachman passed away. And he's still gaining deep understandings from those lookings, from those eyesights of Rabbi Nachman of Wesley. I understand how many good advice he gave me and how many subjects and matters he was mentioning to me only by looking into my eyes in that time. And in each time that I'm going through my difficulties, God forbid, that I'm going through the things that I am, God forbid, in general and specifically myself, like the public, the people that were going through hard times and myself as well. And Hashem Itbarach, the maker of the universe, in his great wonders, he's saving me and protecting me from all those challenges. I understand that there were hints in those looks of Rabbi Nachman of Weslev to me on all those hard times. Rabbi Nachman was guiding him. That was Rabbi Nathan's understanding that Rabbi Nachman was guiding him and teaching him and supporting him and giving him advice with his looks while he was looking at him in the last night for his life, of his life. Because the way he looked at me was as if he was talking to me and telling me, who are you going to lean on? Who are you going to stay with? With all the treasures that you gain, all the wisdom that you learn. What's going to be with you? What will you become? Because many will stand against you. And what will a weak person like you going to do? How will he deal? And so and so and more than that, things that maybe even myself, I cannot understand fully. All of that was hinted in his looks that he was looking at me a lot with great intention in that night. And every time he looked at me, every time he was staring at me for a long time, you can see that the understandings of Rabbi Nathan are based on the fact that he is counting on his own understandings. He is able to believe that his experiences 
are the truth. Now, again, a person might be wrong when he's thinking to himself that he's right. Many times we can find ourselves arguing on certain things, and in the end of the day, we were wrong, and the one we were arguing with and contradicting him, he was right. So how will you know? What should the person do for him to have that ability to really count on himself and to know that his inner assumptions and his deeper understandings are the real truth that you can count on, that you can take out great advice from those, that you can count on them to change directions in life, to make big decisions in life. How can you come to that level that you will understand that your inner wisdom is straight and accepted and represents the real voice of Hashem? How can that be? How can a person reach that level? The answer is basically simple. Maybe it demands hard work, but... In general, it's a simple, practical advice. You should check yourself and look deep into yourself to see what are your real motives. If your decisions, the way you make your decisions is still based on fear, on social pressure, or on your desires, or lusts, or any kind of uncontrolled feelings like anger, rage, frustration, then you cannot count on your understandings. You can know for sure that there is a mixture of bad and good in your spirit still. But when a person is elevating his emotional body, and his spiritual mindset to a higher level that is beyond all those emotional effects, and he is clean in his motives. And the reason why he's doing certain things and all things in his life is coming out of his goodwill and his pure intention, then he can count on his judgment that no matter what he will decide to do, will be the right thing to be done. And, of course, a person can say, okay, so you know how far I am from that level? There is one advice for that. And the advice is called a daily hitbodedut, a daily conversation with yourself, with your higher self, with your soul, and with Hashem. A daily conversation with the right intention to saddle your mind to stabilize your thoughts, to bring yourself to a place of higher level of awareness, of self-awareness, to figure out who you really are and what your mission is, what your life purpose is, and what you need to do, who you really are and what is your essence. For a person to reach that level, that he will figure that out and he will know who he is, only dedication and true commitment are the tools to achieve that. You need to decide, I want to become a person of truth. I don't want to be successful. I don't want to be honored. I don't want to be accepted. I don't want to be all those great things that in the past were the main things that gave me life, that gave me hope. Today, I want to dedicate my life to a higher level, to a greater cause and purpose in my life. And if a person is finding himself that it's not his real level, I can say those things, but really my heart still needs the support and the love and the appreciation, the compliments and honor, respect. What can I do? That is my level. There is no problem with that at all. We were not talking until now about how to become perfect in a second. We're talking about a way of life to correct yourself in a steady and stable way 
on daily basis every day to work on those things. And when you see that you work on those things, for you, it should be a great evidence that you're on the right path, that you are marching on the right way, on the golden path for your success, for the completion and achievement of your goals and all your dreams to come true. And if you go that way, and every day you do the same good things that brought you to results until now, like that daily hit bodhidut, like that daily conversation with yourself, like that inner connection with your higher self and understanding what your motives are and observing and looking and searching and asking and questioning and confronting your fears and on daily basis asking yourself, who and who am I? And what is my purpose? And what am I doing here? And all those questions need to be honestly dealt with and not to be afraid of the answers. And if you feel like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a coward. I'm so not brave. Like I'm so weak in that area. No harm is done. No damage being caused by that. And even if you do look at your past and you feel, but hey, I destroyed this, I ruined that. Now you are alive and now is the time for you to correct. And you need to take yourself together and to work on yourself to fix and correct yourself and to improve yourself. And to bring yourself to your success is to walk on a road, is to take yourself to a life journey. And not to dream that in one day, everything suddenly going to be perfect. You just need to walk one day at a time, one step at a time. And to do the maximum that you can to come closer and closer to your higher self, to the inner light of your soul. And by that, to become one with your maker, with Hashem Yitbarach. The daily hitbodidut should be in the most simple way of them all. That the person will just talk to the maker of the universe like you talk to your best friend. Rabbi Nathan himself, in the beginning of this wonderful book, he's explaining that he had a huge question. He didn't know what to do with. His thoughts were chasing one after the other he was not able to stop the train of his thoughts ever. And even though that he's testifying on himself, that his thoughts were pure, were in holiness, he was still not able to let them rest. He was always thinking and exploring and investigating and brainstorming and trying to figure out things and coming to conclusions. And he was not able to rest. And he wanted to be able to let his mind have some peaceful times. And it's an essential thing, very much needed for the perfection of the way the brain function, that it will be able to rest. And Rabbi Nathan was not able to stop thinking. And he went to consult with many righteous people of his generation, and none of them was able to give him the right advice. Deal? One day, he spoke with Rabbi Nachman of Breslev after a few times that they met, and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev answered his question in the most simple and wonderful and sweet way of them all. And he told him, on anything that bothers you, you can talk about it with Hashem Itbarach. And that was the answer. Okay, you have issues. Okay, you have problems. Okay, you have things that you don't know how to solve. You can talk about any of those with Hashem Itbarach. And the way to talk to Hashem is from your heart, is to use your own vocabulary, your mother tongue, your way of talking, and just speak it out to talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend on anything, on any matter that bothers you, on any hardship, on any difficulty, on any pain, to open your heart and to be totally exposed in front of Hashem, to allow yourself to open up in front of Him and to tell Him 
anything that comes to your mind to cry, to laugh, to argue, to complain, to fight, to judge, to criticize, to whine, to beg for mercy, but to be honest about it, to tell Hashem, I don't know what to do with this. I have to get your help on that. I cannot stand that situation. This is way too much for me, Hashem. And when you do that, you're taking off such gigantic mountains of burden off your shoulders. You take so many boulders off your chest. You're bringing yourself to a place of good, of happiness, of relief. You are removing gigantic obstacles from your path because your fears and your anxieties and your low self-esteem they are the main roadblocks on your journey. And when you start talking about them and bringing them back to the light and you're talking to Hashem like you talk to your best friend and you say, Hashem, look, that obstacle is a pain. Like, I don't know what to do with that. It's way too hard. I can't deal with that. I need your help. In that moment, you pull so much light down onto your obstacles, onto your challenges, that they will never be the same. You're minimizing them. You're breaking them down. You're solving your issues. You're while and by confronting them and dealing with them, confronting your fears, admitting the most shameful feelings that you carry with you for years or maybe generations, many lifetimes that you're struggling with the same pain bringing that over to Hashem. Talking about it is the salvation of your spirit, of your soul. When Rabbi Nath And Rabbi Natan was able to do so and to follow that advice for many, many years. And with that advice, he cleaned himself from within. He purified himself, cleansed himself in tshuva, in true confessions in front of Hashem. And he connected himself to his true higher self to get to that place that his self-esteem rises and that he was able to count on his own self-understandings and to count on his inner assumptions and to follow them as great advice. And based on that, he gained many conversations that passed on to him. Uh, anyone have signal here? No? Can anyone no, hear me? It's, yeah, it's something with his internet, so we'll just oh, give it okay. a second. When Rabina of Breslev got 
older and was on his deathbed. He was around 70 years old. He asked one of his students, bring me the kolv, all good. Give me the all good. The student was not able to understand what is that all good that he referred to. So we asked him, what is that kol tuv, all good? We told him, it's the 24 books of the Bible, the Tanakh. All the good is written over them. All the good is treasured in those holy 24 books of the Bible. It is a known thing that many true righteous people were able to learn all the Torah, the oral Torah, I mean, as well, from the Bible and from the books of the prophets, and the written scripts, scriptures. The way that the Torah is given to us is that the oral Torah is explaining, breaking down, and opening the verses and the real true meaning of the verses of Hashem, of the maker of the universe, to us. So while a person who is not aware to the oral Torah will learn the verses, even though the day can be very full of inspiration and sweet and, 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 and reviving, they will still not contain as much as they will to a real true scholar that memorized all the oral Torah by heart and it's in his mind. And while reading the verses and the amazing scriptures of the Bible and the prophets, prophecies, he will see all the depths that are treasured within the verses and the great amazing scriptures. The Torah was given to the individual and to the great public of Israel and of the whole wide world. Today I spoke with a person who is um, who was born to a Christian family. He converted himself as much as he knew and did whatever he could to come closer and closer to Hashem. But in many ways, he was misguided by rabbis, by teachers, by people who taught him. And he was coming from such a foreign background that he was not even able to understand, even if there would be a good advice while advising him, he was not even able to understand what it was. It's very hard to cross that desert of darkness and exile and to come back to the light. Therefore, Torah learning, even though that it contains all the good, is not enough. And a person must teach himself to get used to have the individual prayer on daily basis and to speak to Hashem on all the things that bothers you and to pray, to ask and to beg for salvations in all the matters and issues that you are not finding yourself able to deal with on your own, that you're not succeeding, that you're failing, that you're crashing, that they are the downfalls and main sources of pain and sorrow of your life. You need to take those problems and to open them up in front of the maker of the universe and to talk about those issues with him, like you talk to your best friend. Just to open up and to be honest, to tell him, I have difficulties in this matter, and in that matter, I don't know what to do about this. I don't know what to do about that. Please give me an advice. And then you don't need to sit and wait and listen to the voice of Hashem talking from in between the branches of the trees. No, 
the answers will shine from within, from your heart. From inside, you're going to understand deep and solid, clear understandings about your life. You will know what Hashem wants from you. Suddenly, areas of your life that were dark and vague and shady, they will bright and they will illuminate and they will shine and you'll find answers within. In times of struggle, suddenly you'll be stronger. In time of confusion, suddenly you'll be clearer. In times of sadness and depression, suddenly you'll find some more hope and trust and you'll make it. For that, we need to be stubborn, consistent, and focused on what our heart desires. If you want the truth, you shall find it. Just don't let go so fast. Don't give up on your dreams. Just keep on pushing forward by the merit of the true righteous ones. And may their holiness and purity and great holy achievements of lifetimes will shine upon us and will be a source of inspiration for us to succeed in great ways and to be sources of light for our surroundings as well, that we will not leave no one behind and we shall help anyone around us to rise and shine and grow and glow in the light of their own souls. Amen. Can you hear us, son? Thank you. Emuna Project is a non-profit organization. To support this work, please make a purchase from our online store or donate through emuna.com. Thank you. My new book, Return to Your Root, is now on Amazon and emuna.com.